What is up, everybody, and welcome into the Dozier Lounge. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Wow, he gets an air PJ's horn. the only one that gets the air horn? Wow, that is, that is pretty amazing. We're the big PJ composure guys. Come on. Big, big. It's going to be a very composed episode, I have a feeling. I hope so. Keep your composure composed here, guys. Episode. We are big PJ guys, and we have some interesting thing that's happening now, and I best I can't throw it to Allie because she is over here. But I'm going to throw it to Allie now and say let's take a look at last year's stats for PJ Dozier. PJ composure. Six points, two rebounds, two assists, 41% from the field. Not a, a respectable modest. 35% from the three-point line. Very modest. That true shooting percentage not so great. But, hey, Harrison, what sticks out to you, man, about P.J. Dozier's stat line? Yeah, the, the three-point percentage is what we'll all be watching this year. And 34.7%, I got to admit, if you would have just asked me what his three-point percentage was, I probably would have said lower than that. Yeah. Not bad for the type of shooter that I think we regard right. him as, right? Well, he was 17 of 49, so the numbers are so low that literally he misses one more and they're bad, makes yeah. two more and they're good, so it's tough. Um, what about you? What stands out to you about P.J. DeRozier? Not even just his stat line, but what stands out to you about him as a player last season? Well, I thought you know, he said a lot of the right things about staying within his role and wanting to flourish within his role. Although at times on the court, PJ <laughs> doesn't always do that. Right, I think he right, looks right. for his shot and he, um, you know, maybe thinks it's time for me to make something happen. So that is a dynamic I'm watching this season. I think PJ is really going to have to try to like rein that in and be a very contained and specific type of player. So that, that's just what I think of, you know, with PJ and where he's at in his career. Michael Malone, he's a Michael Malone guy. Michael Malone loves him. What does it mean to be a Michael Malone guy, and why do you think it is that Michael Malone likes PJ Dozier specifically? Michael Malone likes reliability. He likes knowing mm. what he's going to get. Uh, he doesn't like uh, there to be wild variability in a, in a player. So um, the thing about PJ is that, you know, we, he came to us after flaming out essentially with – from two other squads. Right. Um, and he ended up playing big time minutes in the playoffs when it he counted. Had two big games in the playoffs, really man, did. in each of the first two series. Absolutely. And, you know, he's got the intangibles. I mean, obviously, we joke all the time. We call him PJ Composure, but he really is like um, older than his years. Like, yeah. He stepped on the court the very first time we ever saw him. He looked like he belonged. He was able to address the crowd, which, you know, does. I mean, it's funny, but it means <laughs> something. Like, he's, yeah, yeah, I, think his heart rate, I think his heart rate is just slow. Like, he's able to sort of like. There's a slow out. resting heart rate. Yeah. yeah. So he's just able to sort of like not be overwhelmed by a situation, which means something. He's a yeah. confident young man. Yeah. For he's sure. Confident. Well, another reason why he's a Michael Malone guy, defense, yeah, right? Yeah. Michael Malone loves defense. PJ Composure is a really high level defender. He can guard multiple positions. Very smart, high IQ defender, and um, you just know what you're going to get on that end of the floor from him. Yeah, we may, maybe I can I can say this later. We might have overrated him a little bit defensively because I think he's really good and he has the tools to be. But has he proven it? I think one thing though about PJ Dozier, a lot of these guys at the high school level, superstars, right? And he's he's one of them. You get to the college level, stars or superstars, whatever. You get to the NBA, and if you don't make it in their first couple stints, you start to get funneled into can you now become more of a niche player, meaning mm -hmm. you're not going to be the all-around, get to do everything. Can you focus in on the two or three things that a team really wants you to do? And I think to me that's you know, kind of central with P.J. Dozier is – he has – you can just tell he plays a little bit like he was a first option. Now he's not that, and can he adjust that role? And I think that's going to be one of the big things for him. But if we go to the big question surrounding P.J. Dozier, I think the big question, because you look at there's so many guards, you know, so many you know power forwards and centers. Now the, the spot that's open is on the wing, and the spot that's really open is Torrey Craig's. And so can he replace Torrey, and is that sort of what he has to aim for? What do you think, Eric? Oh, that's really interesting um, because he – in that specific question is battling Greg Whittington, probably. Who see. you just <laughs> declared. Who I just declared. Um, I don't really see him as a Tory replacement per se. To me, he's almost like, is he a Will Barton stand-in? Hmm. Is he a uh, Gary Harris stand-in at times? Um, so, uh, yes and no. He's kind of like 90% of Gary Harris's defense and 90% of uh, Will Barton's playmaking. <laughs> yeah, that's With what none I mean. of their shooting. <laughs> yeah, and I um, I just see him as a really valuable player. I think he's going to play a lot of time at uh, the three on the second unit. Um, we'll see. I mean, if that mini lads uh, lineup comes to fruition. Maybe really, four. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, he, he, I think he's probably going to play. I mean, I think I imagine at least the – plan early on is that he's going to play with Compasso and he's going to play with Monte and so he'll be not 
uh, running the floor and playing the one like he's done in the past. But um, so it'll be a little bit of a modified role for him. Uh, so I, I don't know what to expect from PJ this year. Is it fair to talk to about him as a potential Tory Craig replacement? I do think so. And one thing to remember about Tory Craig, you know, after Jeremy Grant, the Jeremy Grant departure, you start to think of Craig as the next best option for a wing defender. But that's not really how I view him. I thought his best yeah. defensive games came against other guards. So, you know, your first thought of PJ, not really a wing. But can he do what Torrey Craig did? Yes. I think he can stay in front of, you know, some electric guards. So the other thing, though, is he might have more to, to offer offensively. And I don't know if I buy the jump shot, but a little bit of playmaking can get to the rim. This is a guy that maybe Yoke isn't afraid to pass the ball to. And, and that really is the bar. Do you yeah. think a little bit of playmaking, Harrison? With PJ Dozier? Or, or a lot of playmaking. I think a lot of playmaking. I mean, this guy's a point guard it, yeah. uh, by trade. You know, he, yeah. he's a natural point guard. He's played point guard for most of his life. So that's going to be his approach on the floor. And that's where I feel like he could actually be a big upgrade from Tory. Mm. Um, because, look, he's six foot six. He's the same height as Tory. Uh, long wingspan as well, which Tory also had. Not as, like, physically built. Like, Tory right. was, was bigger. Uh, PJ, though, more slender, but I think that could really help him. Just his ability to potentially create, though, that's going to give you a whole different dynamic right uh, compared to what Tori gave you in that spot. And in terms of him as a potential Tori replacement, I, I do think PJ's better positions would be the one and the two. Yeah. And him playing at the three would just kind of be out of necessity because of the point guards on this roster. But I think he could do it. So I wrote about this for the list on the RJ Hampton video a little bit, but I'm going to talk about it. There's video evidence that you're going to want to see, but you get Compazzo in the second unit. Now that's your lead point guard probably, right? Lead pick and roll playmaker. You got Monte Morris, who's sort of also your lead. Like he's like 1A, 1B. When you put P.J. Dozier alongside those guys, he becomes the third ball handler. And like he is – Good as a lead ball handler, great as a second. As a third, it's like, okay, man, like there's overqualified. Overqualified to be yeah. the third. And in that first preseason game, we actually saw a lot of, and when that lineup was out there, Compazzo and Dozier were off the ball. Uh, and Do or Dozier's on the ball. What did I say? Compazzo and, and Monte are off the yeah. ball. So you get Dozier running pick and rolls, and you have the third best defender, you know, guard defender on him. And it's like, yeah, this is great. Now you're attacking a weakness in the defense with a guy capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really interesting. I do think he can be a Torrey Craig replacement. I actually think that he can make up more of Torrey Craig's defense than most, in part because I was a little bit lower on Torrey Craig's defense. I think he was, to your point, Brendan, elite against a small sample of people and good, merely good at, right. at a larger sample. So I think Dozier can probably be that. He's dialed in. He sees the offense unfolding a couple plays ahead. Defensively, yeah. he does, so he gets into position. And then I've talked about this a lot. I don't think it's the three-point shot that, of Torrey that sunk him. Same with Gary. It's the ability to make plays and just keep the offense right. moving. And he's a guy that can absolutely do that. He might not knock down the open shot, but he can – continue that continuity offense so that you go from one action to the next and i think that'll be big just think about how when tory was sometimes in like a dho with Jokic, like it just died sometimes yeah like tory didn't have the ability to like take it and attack off yep. the dribble yeah. and just really be a threat out of that pj is is a big time threat in those type of actions yeah. so it's not just so much that he can finish the play but like you said, that ball never stops moving. If yeah. it has to keep swinging, right. it can. Right. Um, let's take an over-under look here because we're talking about him and you know all the things he brings to the table. Let's be honest. At the guard spot, there's four guys ahead of him, maybe five when you add Will Barton. At the wing spot, he's not a natural fit. So I'm going to put 29 games played. Last year, he was a hit-or-miss player. He didn't play that often. So this year, 29, it's really low. Did I undershoot this again, Eric? Um, I don't think you – maybe just by a little bit. That, that actually – 29 is less than half. I think, I mean, I, I see him playing in about half the games. You know, like I I don't, it, it's so difficult because as we're doing all of these player previews, like I like every player that we have on this team. Like, <laughs> there's, no, there's no players that I'm like, just don't play, like bench him. There's no like, you know, yeah. end of the bench dwellers that you're just like happy to forget about. Like I, well, I want, it's early. It's true. That's true. But I mean, <laughs> mo that's a great point. But players like, PJ, like we know what we can do. Yeah, that's true. Like we, yeah. we know that he's an NBA player. We know there's a lot of potential there. Um, it's just whether or not he's going to have the opportunity to showcase it. Not even necessarily like at a f to or from a fault of his own. It's just man, it's just a lot, a lot of top of players, number. man. A yeah. lot of players. So, so he played 29 games last year. That's why that line is there. Do you see him having a larger role this year? I 
think so, but to your point, like it's a, not off the table that PJ actually just doesn't make this rotation. Like right. that timeline's in play, and if that happens, he could absolutely play less, fewer games than that. Um, I think it'll be more though. I think it's over. I, I just think. I think Malone wants to give PJ an opportunity. Yeah, he does. So if PJ does the work, it'll be there. Yeah, I'm going over too. And for him to play that few of games in the regular season and then be trusted in the spots he was in the playoffs yeah. last year, it's great point. It's unreal. You just really don't true. see that that yeah, often. So true. It's on a two way contract last year. So I, I think Vote brought up a great point. The Nuggets want him to be in the rotation. Mike yeah. Malone wants him. To get playing time. Yeah, and the other thing, like PJ Dozier coming out of just the first preliminary week of practice, like we're hearing rave reviews coming up. The training camp MVP. That, yeah, this is such peak Malone, though. I mean, if we could, we should go back every year and hand out the training camp Michael Malone awards. <laughs> well, no, it does like, tell you something. Devon Akun Purcell has really <laughs> impressed. But all the same, like it means something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it tells you that Malone wants that to be the yeah. case you yeah. know so yeah he's a he's a really interesting one we just look at the at the, where it's all stacked up let's go to the the questions though because we'll or we'll go to mailbag here yeah, we had some it. people what happened to eric's severed head his bloody head has fallen <laughs> off of our it's just, well, there's just no there's no room yeah it's no surprisingly right. wow um all right so let's see we had some fans reach yeah out? so discord member sweet baby ray also known as raybone uh feel free to agree ray. or disagree with me here he thinks the limiting factor for PJ at the small forward spot is not his defense and his size. It's his three-point shooting. Harrison, agree or disagree? It is his biggest drawback as an offensive player, for sure. And, um, I mean, just thinking about the shooting on that second unit. Yep. If it's yeah. the second unit we saw in that preseason yep. game. Hartenstein. Um, no. I don't know if he's going to be a shooter. But he's not. If his does reputation yeah. isn't there, even if he hits him, it's going to take a long time yeah. before he has gravity. To Michael Green. He's a Jeremy Grant level right. shooter. Yeah. Um, Camposo, I think the jury's out on what type of shooter he'll be in the NBA. Monte Probably Morris, a, a good shooter. PJ Dozier, uh, not a good shooter. Yeah. So, not an ideal amount of shooting on that second unit. One great shooter, and he's not a volume shooter. It's Monte, and he's not like a volume three point right. shooter. Yeah. Um, I, that's a good question. So I think the answer, when you talk about limiting, the way I would phrase it is that shooting is like 50% of offense, right? Like if you can shoot, then it's like, okay, we checked the biggest box. You're and starting at a different like level. Yes. Yeah, you're starting so high. And it doesn't yeah. mean you can play. You have to still check some other yeah. boxes. But for if you're, that box is not checked, then you better be great at everything else. Or then it becomes harder to say like, okay, well, we have to play this guy, but so we have to get a shooter out there. Yeah. And so I do think it makes it, it is a limiting factor for him. And I don't expect him to really become a great shooter. I just Agreed. I, and that's why I think if you're hoping to see that second unit look a lot better, you're crossing your fingers while Barton's ready to go sooner rather than later, personally. Yeah. Uh, Discord member Joseph asked us, do you see PJ becoming a top three pick and roll player on this team? Is that hmm. his ceiling? Is he one of those guys? I think you mean ball handlers, right? He, he, means, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. he, he does mean ball handlers, yep. Well, if you were to ask me this question before the start of free top agency, three. I would have said, yeah, he's the third best lead ball handler on this team. You know, because we didn't see Camposo uh, in the cards for this season. Monte was still here. But we even were thinking about a scenario where PJ would, like, jump Monte this yeah. year. Like, that we thought could be on the table. So were we? All right, all right. Yeah, we did. What are you talking about? Were we? What, are you, okay. what are you talking about? I think we talked about the idea of handing the keys over yeah, to Yeah, we definitely did. Monte might so yeah. I think he can just because he's such a natural pick-and-roll handler. He, he's got, like, just a great feel in the pick and roll. That was evident since the first minutes he played for the Nuggets this season. So I think he can. Yeah. I, to me, it's going to go Jamal Murray. Yeah. It's hot take. <laughs> it's going to go uh, Facundo Campasso. And then it's probably going to go Monte Morris. And then PJ, maybe. Like, the I, disrespect I just, we have for Will Barton the third is just, I, mean, just, I will not stand for it. He's an incredible pick and roll player, especially alongside Yoke. Yeah. Um, I, Way more of a shooting threat. I mean, I, okay. <laughs> no, that was that convincing. Well, I, listen, uh, I, uh, it's so hard to. I just don't know what to expel, expect from Will Barton. I, yeah. I'm just not even accounting for his contributions into my imagination at this point. Like, 
until I see him do it, like he's still being held out of practice. You know, right. we're hearing oh, rumblings. Yeah. Like I just don't know. Barton's what, theoretical till he's not. He's just yeah. theoretical. He's the uh, Schrodinger's uh, Willie B. Buckets. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll have to see what happens. But just as it stands right now, I, th- I think that's the order. Like PJ maybe number four. Like yeah, I, I just don't. PJ maybe a that year often. out from being in the top three. See, the thing that's funny about this is I do see him being on ball, but for that same reason, like if you have multiple point guards, then even if he's not the best option, he's being guarded by the third best option. So the positive and the negative come together to make a bigger positive. So we just talked about the importance of PJ developing that three-point shot. Adam Ross Williamson wants to know how likely is it that PJ develops a three-point shot? I don't know if I ever see him being like a above average shooter because it doesn't look great right yeah it doesn't look great nothing like necessarily yeah. like horribly wrong with it just doesn't he doesn't look like a shooter. yeah just not a natural knockdown shooter like that's okay because he yeah. contribute in a lot of other areas but i would be surprised yeah if i think about pj dozier i just imagine him sort of like driving the lane like making sort of difficult shots yeah. uh, in close like it, shooter is not something that For i sure. assigned to him um but so I no, and I don't imagine. I mean, I I can't imagine it's in the cards, and it's going to be the focus for him to be working on that three point shot all the time. Like players that develop that late, like Jason Kidd or, or players like that. Like it was that. a different game too. Like, yeah, I just yeah. I just, I don't see it for. I think I kind of think like who we see, PJ is is kind of who he's going to be. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Let's move on now to our bold predictions. Is that what we have next? Yeah, bold predictions here for him. And who goes first on this? Oh my god. Uh, me? Uh, Dion? Let's go with vote. Let's see. Let's look at the graphic. Whose heads? Oh, it's me. He's a backup wing. Uh all right, that's that not bold. bold. Um, <laughs> that is <laughs> <laughs> I phoned this one in. Uh, I think your bold prediction is just a description of who he is on the team. Yeah, look, there's one of two things that's gonna happen, guys. PJ's either gonna become that backup wing or he's not. And I'm so bold as to say. He, he will is. <laughs> laying it wow. down. Wow. You heard wow. it here fir- first, folks. You heard wow. it here first. Real vote of confidence there. Okay, I'm oh. going to be even more bold and say that he will find his way into a meaningful role. What does meaningful mean? Well, it means that it's going to mean something. It's going to be full of meaning. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I think is going to happen with PJ. No, for real, though. Like, I've said this This kind of – if you follow all my bold takes, they all follow a pattern, a vision of I see for this Nuggets team. So mm-hmm. I said Gary Harris, Will Barton, only one of those guys will end up on the roster full time. I yep. still feel like – I mean, I'm not saying – I. That's a certainty. I'm just saying I, I, it's an avenue I really see shaping up. And if that is the case, that opens up an opportunity for him, and, and I could see that. So um, I think he plays a meaningful role that he, like Tory Craig did last year. My bold take, P.J. Dozier will oh, God, in the you're 2019 or 2020-21 season <laughs> play most of his minutes at small forward i mean that's yeah we we, we filled these up too early yeah they're not really that bold now. we're one preseason hey, game in and these um, all seem to we were right as usual yeah we that's right. the real takeaway here we're <laughs> yeah, just we're great really at good we're really yeah. good at it okay um let's find out what mine is together oh my god you get show prep it's just uh well i mean i i prepared it ahead of time oh he'll have a career year this will be his career year <laughs> yeah, he's, he's that like he's just so hold on, hold on a second because be i'm gonna go back and look at the career numbers here so he played two games yeah <laughs> Uh, then Probably he, not his then, career. Then, then he played six games. Oh, watch I, out. I see, I'm seeing him at minimum doubling then. <laughs> okay, then he played 29 games, of course, last year. So I mean, I just think I, beyond... Uh, you Are know, we not the, bold on Composure? Beyond the, well, that, there's just so much unknown about P.J. Composure and where he, his... Uh, role with this team lies. Just be, and again, a lot of it doesn't even have to do with him. It's just there's so much just strange just going on with this lineup that we don't know what to expect out of him. But I, I just, um, outside of just, you know, the, the obvious it, when you're talking about a career year, his numbers ex- uh, going up because he gets more of an opportunity. I just think he's going to look good. Like, I think he's going to play well. I think he's just going to go out there and we're going to be uh, confident when he's out there. We're going to feel like we did when he was uh, inserted into the playoffs. And you're like, oh, man, this is awesome. Like, this is a great player. That This is another diamond in the rough find by Tim Connolly and co where he was – thrown onto the trash heap we picked him up and we made him a really serviceable wing in the in the nba one man's trash is another man's gold eric oh. that expression? yeah there it is it's i treasure. i think i think he <laughs> might treasure oh, yeah. you're right <laughs> <laughs> expression that corner moment. that's expression corner i think you know one of my favorite 
lineups this year very well could be. I mean, we go Murray, Porter, Jokic, of course, they're on the court. You give another shooter. Let's say Bull Bull. Let's just get crazy. Okay? Why not? Why not? Sure. We're in charge. Uh, sure, it what? can't happen in a preseason game. It probably will happen in the uh, regular season. But if no that problem. extra guy was P.J. Dozier, I might actually kind of like that because he does have the size to see over the defense and, and like he can help keep that engine running even if he's never finishing the plays. But he's also just good at getting into the teeth of the defense. He's so tall. He's so big. Like He can, he can get up there, elevate, and collapse things. And I just think... Um, it, there's a chance that he's on one of Denver's most interesting and entertaining lineups be, as the fifth guy, but I think his. I hope we there. see him a lot at the two next to Jamal Murray too. this season. That's probably where we could have gotten bold too. Is somewhere with PJ emerging as a shooting guard sooner rather than later. But <laughs> there's wish, a, there's a lot of talent ahead of him. I just wish Denver would start playing six guys at a time. There's just too many guys. Yeah, too many guys. <laughs> I want to see. Uh, that's it for PJ Composure, aka PJ Composure. Dozier. Uh, if you want to see the premium content, guys, it's up on thednvr.com where oh. you can check out the wind chimes, the fan vote, irrational fan <laughs> vote, the list, <laughs> conversations with George Carl, all that stuff. You're going to want to head over to thednvr.com, $5 a month to get a free shirt. You get access to all of our good so stuff. So cheap. Wow. So cheap. You get into the real club. We'll see everybody next time.